Hello, I'm Lunge, and in today's video, I'll be not playing the game, but I will be commentating on a pre recorded gameplay that I took while I was on my trip, where I was absent for a while. And I am going to be showing you a new deck that works great, honestly. And uh, basically, this is the second the second part of the first video. Basically, this is part two. And my commentary is absolute garbage. I know, I know. But I'm going to try explaining everything in this video, hopefully, clearly, and just how the deck works in general. And right off the bat, you guys can see that it is the famous shield nuke deck. Yes, uh, this thing absolutely dominates this game mode. Only if you have, like, class... 10 shield or something i don't know i don't really know the the actual specs required for this but it works and right off the bat i got pretty unlucky if you haven't seen the first like two seconds of the gameplay um you saw me get like crit two crit buffs and uh a scope buff which i absolutely don't need for this deck i would much rather have an sp and usually i do get an sp buff for example, the, the buff where it won't increase my SP to spawn or like when I merge something, it'll times a hundred of that amount of SP, you know, and it adds to my wallet or whatever the small SP bar thing is. Anyway, I didn't get any of that, which is, which I was pretty shocked. That's why I, I had to like wait for a bit, you know, because I played like two or three games before this just to practice on it and um to test it out if it's actually good or not and it turns out it's awesome and all of those times my first two were all sp related or it was either like the rock passive which was extremely helpful for waves one and two however i got the scope one for this time and it really did not help me a lot it did help me quite a bit uh, not quite a bit it didn't help me a lot but it did help me take out some of the mobs a little bit more easily i wouldn't say it helped me a lot like a lot a lot right but it did help me quite a bit um quite a bit as in you know it didn't really help me a lot and uh for round two or wave two you have to send or you have to kill the first the big slime if you want to kill it or if you know that you won't be able to deal enough damage you can just let it through but through testing apparently my specs and with this amount of pips and this amount of nuke dice and shield, I actually can kill slime boss, which I was shocked. So I lost that game. But after that tragic moment, I decided to just kill the first big slime. And apparently the rest, I can just kill it with my own pips or my own physical damage, which is good. For the second buff, I got the SP where it won't increase the SP count sp to spawn you know for a set chance and um this is really helpful for especially for shield new you know it's a mergeable it's a merging you know deck and also if you guys have yeah basically the small not the small the the fat mob the mini boss actually went through i didn't actually notice that first i thought it was dead because i wasn't listening to audio i wasn't even playing like i was on a car i'm pretty sure when i recorded this and i didn't notice because uh i thought it would kill it like it survived it went through with like 200 hp or 400 hp just one crit not even one crit like three shots that's all it took and is there more to commentate on this i think i'll start commentating when i actually get to like the parts where i actually choose my passives and my buffs but so far it's just normal shield nuke stuff you just wait uh, another thing is you can't there's since there's no opponent you can't you don't really need to stall all that much you don't need to be like oh i'm gonna wait for the second shield to block all these mobs or something you just kind of shoot your nukes whenever there's a big chunk of them you know because sometimes when i use this deck i i know there's a huge clump of mobs but i still do like wait because so that my opponent won't get the sp but for this game mode, you don't really have to do that. So when you just see a big clump, just shoot it. Like, it doesn't even matter. And all those SP buffs that you're going to get throughout the run, it's going to help you out a lot on SP management, which is very important. 
for this deck. Um, I haven't tested this out with a class 10 nuke or any new class below class 11, but I do think it works decently. Um, if I recall from my friends who played with uh, low class nuke. And for my third buff, I didn't get anything um, important like SP buff or like the give one heart every floor or the freezing one. I got the sh I got the crit one. Yeah, I got the crit one, but did I really need to choose the crit one? No. But the reason why I didn't choose anything else was the first option was when there is an empty space, I'll be able to get, you know, a random growth pretty much. A random random growth, you know. And the second one was um, whenever I spawn, there's a chance that I could get like a 2 pip or something. And for, for those, you don't really need a 2 pip. You don't really need a lot of pips for this deck because you'll eventually get him. Um, so I decided to just choose with crit because I don't want to get board lock very early on and That's pretty much why I chose because well Crit isn't gonna help me but the other two will mess up like and influence the game because the the crit and the scope honestly it Doesn't help me at all, but it also doesn't influence the game at all. So I don't think it matters all that much this is a cool strategy that I did use though, um, choosing something that co is completely like dumb, should I say? It's it's very dumb to choose like a crit and a you know crit buff, crit buff and the scope buff for shield nuke. But if you really think about it, the other choices I had while choosing the crit and the scope were rather questionable because it could have actually influence the game and i could have lost because of it and you see me play this you know deck rather strange i don't usually play this deck like that i also made a mistake just then um i don't really play the deck like this but i do play like this a bit reckless in this game mode because of how much sp buffs you get i'm just gonna say it right now you would want to get the hp per floor and the freezing one. I don't really think you need the shield one because you already have shield in your deck. I never choose it. And uh, the shield, I mean the nuke one. You don't also need the nuke one. Like it's kind of obvious you already have nuke. Kind of goes the same for shield. The shield only lasts for two seconds as well. You know, your normal shield is way better than the shield that the game gives you. So I think that's one thing. And stuff that you should never choose is like once again the random growth buff. Where it will spawn a random 1 to 7 pip dice. When there's an empty tile. And also the one where it'll give you extra extra pips. And that also might. Might. I'm not saying it will. It might. And if I didn't let my fat mob through. I would just let this slime go past. Because I wouldn't die. I would have 2 hearts by now. Or I would have had 1 hearts after the slime went through but because of that one mistake and one bad rng moment i had to kill the slime it's not big of a it's not a big of a deal if this was a normal pvp game it might have been but not for this game mode you just get so much sp and like there you get a lot of buffs related to it so it's not it doesn't really matter and also if you are going to play this try to keep your shield count to like maybe five manage it please or else later on you'll see in the video in the footage where i had no nukes i had nukes but like i was saving them for bosses etc and i didn't have like a one pip or a two pip nuke there there's a time and i had to send a three pip so always manage your shield and also your nuke uh you have to plan ahead i kind of played very recklessly I only recorded one gameplay. I wish I recorded other games because this was by far my worst uh, performance ever. And for double bosses, you just have to kind of wait. Uh, make sure to not mess it up. Mess, it, mess up your timing. I've done that once, but it was okay because it was Basilisk. It didn't spawn a slime. And for the thing, I removed the scope buff because I don't need it. As I said earlier, I need the freezing one more than the scope one. The freezing one's kind of odd because sometimes I feel like I mess up the pattern of the mob's movement 
and like the movement speed where like I'll estimate like I'm I'm like yeah I'll send nuke right now and that mob you know all the way behind there it'll reach the bombs or the nukes radius and it'll die but sometimes or a lot of times the freezing buff will actually prevent me from you know calculating anything because it'll like instantly freeze it won't it won't freeze when like the nuke hits the target it'll just freeze whenever you merge so Calculating is quite hard, but it's better to have it than to not have it because it will save your life sometimes. If, for example, you really don't want to get hit by a knight. You have a perfect setup and you feel like you're not going to get any shield. Then you could merge twice in a row like on a berserk knight and make sure that the knight doesn't kill you. I've done that once. I've only pulled it off once and the rest of the times I just, you know, let it hit me. I don't really mind because I always get you. And also, this uh, blessing is set to 12.5% if you guys are wondering. I do recommend 12.5 because usually I always go for 13.5. But for this, I gave one extra percent to the shield because shield is a necessity. And you need shield to survive. So it's like a main part of this deck pretty much. And... Uh, if without it, without like having at least three, it's kind of hard to survive. So, yeah. And also, you might notice that I am, or I already have like a six pip and a five pip. Like, I have a bunch of five pips and like a six pip. That's not normal for like a shield nuke deck, I think. Um, but you just have to send more nukes in this game. Mode. Like, you have to, or else you're not gonna have enough SP. But as I said, you don't really have to, like, I guess. And also for the next buff, I got the sh uh, the HP one. Because the HP one is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, if I got the HP one a lot sooner, then uh, for the next slime, I, would, I can just let it go through. That's the beauty of the HP buff. Because for nuke, the main counter for nuke is slime. And for slime, you could just... If you wait two floors... You could ignore slime completely, which is very cool in my opinion. And yeah, that's that's pretty much how you play shield nuke. <laughs> there's there's really nothing to, to say about it because I don't know how many videos I made on shield nuke, but shield nuke's pretty straightforward. You just need the requirements to play and a little bit of luck, but it's usually to it's usually the skill level of the player. I have made some videos on shield nuke in the past, so if you guys want to check that out, I'll leave it in the description, probably in the comment section, not the description, so yeah. And I have been working on the beginner's guide um, for Dice Tower. I think I'm a little late, but I think I'm a lot late actually, but I do want to make it because I've tried it out on my second account, or not, not my second account, my third account. Because my second account is considered like decently high. My third account, Sustune, free to play account, I've tried it and I've only done it twice. And I've used Atomic Quake and I couldn't survive up to floor 10. Um, I wasn't using the Hell variant, I was using the normal with Mimic variant and stuff. That might have been the problem, but I don't remember, I don't remember exactly how I lost, but... I did lose and I kind of was like, oh, I, this, this is why the people in my comment section were complaining about. I, I do understand them now. And I think what random they should have done is I think they should have made it so that make all the dice class class 10, right? But if you have a higher class, for example, I have class 11 nuke, then it'll have class 11 nuke. But the lowest class would be class 10 so i don't know exactly what oh i have compression class 9 so i have compression class 9 on this account however during this game mode i'll have class 10 but my lunar will not be lowered down to class 12 I, it'll just stay at class 12 but the lowest minimum would be class 10 and that applies to everyone so if you don't have any class 10 plus legendaries all your legendaries are going to be class 10 um something like that i wish they implement something like that because i 
feel like it might be very stressful and it might be very hard hard yeah hard it could be a hard game mode for new players and i had to learn that the hard way in fortnite um as you as i said earlier you can dodge the knight by merging like i could have merged like a two-bit shield there to dodge the knight but again during this game mode i kind of do play recklessly because it's not competitive it's kind of casual for me i don't know about you guys but it, it very is hectic it's one of the more fun slash chaotic gameplay like game modes out there but i feel like this is a lot more casual for me because may it's probably because i'm not beating real players i'm just fighting my own like solo mode but i've never thought solo mode as like a chill game mode but for this game mode i feel like i am actually relaxed while playing so as i said i played this in a car and i never play random dice like in a car unless it's like for updates or something i think the last time i've done it was when berserker was first out and i was testing it out i think that was the last time i played on a, on a moving vehicle on a moving transport so I'm, i think that goes to show how much i care about this game and how much like i put my focus into the game because on a moving car you can't really be like 100 percent focused on your phone i don't know maybe some of you guys can but like for me i have to like i look outside the window to see where i'm exactly at you know even though i know exactly where i'm going you know i do that a lot for random dice i like if the, if it's like an offline game or if i'm playing like a very casual game i do play it on the phone on a car but random dice i feel like it needs my attention basically especially pvp for co-op it's a different story because co-op game modes i just kind of afk i i leave the game completely if i am going to get set up and just let my support play out so for those occasions i just leave the game because i'll much i'll much rather do something else on, on my phone or just not watch my phone at all i don't know if anyone can agree with that but that's what i do on on the car i'll much rather just watch look outside the window you know i guess enjoy the view you know enjoy, enjoy the view in the moving car and from floor six i think like it, it the berserk waves or the berserk boss starts to spawn they're not that scary in my opinion um the earlier ones they don't the last wave so floor 10 the magician one is a joke because you have to kill the slime boss either way right i mean to be fair if magician wasn't there i think i would have just let slime boss go through and just lose two hearts right and just leave the game because i don't really need to kill it if i have three hearts but because of Magician, I have to kill it. And as you can see, my SP is uh, it's, it's looking pretty good. I think the maximum SP I've ever reached in this game mode, not that I've played this game a lot, this game mode a lot. I think I reached 130, 130k SP. So I think I've reached around that, which is impressive. Not in this game mode, because this game mode, you get so much SP and you get, you know, you can just remove SP, right? And uh, for Berserk Knights and B Berserk Leons, funny thing is, no matter how fast you kill, and also no matter, like, you have, the f I have the freezing buff. But it still uses the ability when it dies, which is funny. And that's when the, I think you can, I've never tried it, but I think you can merge another dice. And prevent that from happening. Because you just freeze the boss. I think that's how you block it. I've only done that once on the Berserk Knight. Way down below on the floor levels. I don't know about the later ones. Because they have a lot. They have a strict activation timer. So, And for the snake. Do not think snake as a Leon. Or think snake as a normal boss. Because you can't just let snake, snake just spawn mobs. You can't be like, oh, free ASP. Because you'll have to send more nukes. One more nuke, but still. That's still wasting SP. Another small tip that I have I definitely did not do. If a shield is blocking everything. For example, it's blocking... There's a shield that blocks every single mob that's coming up. 
and if you have the freezing buff i don't recommend using the freezing buff for example i don't recommend you like merging and stuff i i think you should just let all the mobs hit the shield and get stuck there and then do whatever you want to do because or else you'll be losing potential on the shield so it's a very tight mechanic i don't expect anyone to pull it off like consistently but it is a thing that if you really want to do but again i've made like several mistakes in this gameplay um and also my rng wasn't the best but i still managed to like beat it relatively easily so i don't think you really need to focus too much on the game that's a small tip i don't even know if i should consider that a tip because i've i've never used it before so i don't even know if it works or if it's any better but yeah so that's it the game only has 20 seconds left uh is there anything more to say about shield nuke it's just the best to be honest I think I struggled a little bit on the Atomic video, but for this one, I've, like, no sweat needed. Like, I didn't even sweat a single bit. I was also in a car, so, like, I didn't even put full attention to this game, and I was still able to beat it. And, yeah, as you can see, Magician couldn't even, like, throw a meteor at me, you know, and boom. That's pretty much it. And that was the whole video. I hope you enjoyed this gameplay. I'll go experiment more on the beginner decks, but if you have any suggestions for a beginner's guide, then please leave it in the comments down below. And sorry for my absence, terrible timing for the trip. However, I am back for the part two. So yeah, that's it. Leave a like and subscribe and comment down what your favorite deck is for the Dice Tower event and how you cleared it. And that's about it. See ya.